number one, it says determine whether the following functions are exponential growth and decay. Let's look at the calculator. It says uh, we're going to graph it, and we did. And you notice the y values how they're increasing. So just because of I mean because the y values are increasing, this is called growth, exponential growth. So now let's go to number three, and you want to type that into the calculator. So I've graphed uh, number three. We have here is a graph. What you want to do is you want to look at the table. And you notice that the y values are decreasing. Because the y values are decreasing, this is called exponential decay. Let's go ahead and do number five by graph. So number five, you see that the y values are increasing. Uh, as we go from, from 0 to 19, you see the x values, the y values increasing, so that's going to be growth. So now we're going to do number six. It says, no, number seven. We're going to rewrite this as exponential form. Remember that the base is 2. The exponent is negative 3, and that's going to equal to 1 over 8. Number 9 is natural log. And I told you in class that this is log base e equals 0. And it's 1. I'm sorry, right? there's 1. So you have e, the base is e, to the power 0. And anything raised to the power 0, the 0 power, is equal to 1. Number 11, we're going to rewrite this in log form. Remember, it's going to be the inverse of an exponential. So you have log. The base is 1 half, and it's 32 equals uh, negative 5. The logarithm will have the exponent as the output. Remember that. Logarithm will have, the, uh, will have an output of, a, of an exponent. 13, you're going to say log base e of 0 0.0. 4, 9, 8. That will equal to negative 3. Remember, you're not going to see uh, log base e in the book textbooks. So it's a natural log of 0 0.0498 is equal to negative 3. Evaluate without using a calculator. We have log base 7 of 1. We know that 7 raised to what power gives you 1? It has to be 0. So this will be equal to 1. Number 17, we have log base 5 of 125. Remember that the output will be an exponent. So it's going to be 5 raised to what power gives you 125? 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 gives you 125. So it's 5 to the third power. So that's equal to 3. Use properties of logs to rewrite the expression in terms of log base 5 of 2 log base 5 of 3, log base 5 of 7. So for number 19, we have log base 5 of 7 squared, because 7 times 7 is 49. And what you can do is you can multiply 2 times log base 5 of 7. So 21, we can use the quotient property, log base 5 of 21 minus log base 5 of 2. Now, you see this log base 5 of 21. We can rewrite it as log base 5 of 3 times 7 minus log base 5 of 2. 3 times 7 can be separated. That's going to be the product property. So you have log base 5 of 3 plus log base 5 of 7 minus log base 5 of 2, log base 5 of 2. So 21 is a product of 3 and 7, and you can separate it, and that was addition. And then division, you're going you're gonna to subtract. Expand completely. We're going to focus our attention on the numerator. So it's natural log of 7 times x to the 1 third power minus log natural log of 10, and we have y to the fourth, z to the second. So I use the quotient property. I use the quotient property to divide here. So now I'm going to separate this. So I have natural log, natural log of 7, plus 1 third natural log of x, minus, and I'm going to use parentheses, natural log of 10, plus 4 natural log of y, plus 2 natural log of z, and I separated it completely. What you can do also to further simplify, you have the natural log of 7 plus 1 third natural log of x, and then you can distribute the negative minus natural log of 10 
minus 4 natural log of y minus 2 natural log of z. For 25, I'm going to condense it. So the first thing is to move this one half as, a, as an exponent. So you have natural log of x plus 5 raised to the 1 half minus parentheses 2 natural log of x plus natural log of y. And why is it plus? Because I factored a negative. You see I factored a negative? Now you see these two we're, we're subtracting, but I'm going to simplify this here. I'm going to condense this. This is the product property. So it's natural log of x plus 5 raised to the 1 half minus this is this can be condensed using the product property so this will be natural log of x squared that is the power property times y now this part here you can make it into a quotient because this is a quotient property natural log of x plus 5 raised to the 1 half divided by x squared y 27 evaluate so i'm just going to go ahead and get the calculator and do it. So I have control log base 15 and then we have 10. Sorry. Base 15, 10. So that gives us point 85 points. We are going to condense and simplify. So we have log base 6 and we're going to use a product property. It's going to be 24. Remember the 2 has to go over here times 3 squared. So we have log base 6 of 24 times 9. So go ahead and multiply 24. That gives us log base 6 of 216. And we're going to evaluate log base 6 of 216 is 3. 31, we could write, we can write this as the same base. So I know that 16x is the same thing as saying 4 to the second power raised to the x power equals 64 to the negative 1 power. So we have 4 raised to the second power raised to the x. And this is, gives us 4 to the third power raised to the negative 1. Because 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 gives you 64. 4 squared gives you 16. So now we have a power raised to a power. So we have to say that 4 raised to the 2x is the same thing as saying 4 raised to the negative 3. So we have the same base. So we know that 2x equals negative 3. So x equals negative 3 over 2. So we're going to check. So I went ahead and checked. 16 to the power of negative 3 halves is 0 0.015625. And I went ahead and divided. So it's 0 0.015625. So they both are equal. 33, you already have a logarithm there. So what you want to do is you want to give me the inverse. And this is base 10. So this is 10 to the second power gives you x squared. Remember, by default, it's uh, base 10. Then you get the square root of both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus 10. So you're going to have to check 10, and you have to check negative 10. So I'm going to go to the calculator. Control log base 10, and so we have 10 squared, that gives us 2. Uh, log base 10, and we have a negative 10 to the second power, and it gives us 2. So it does. 35, I'm going to make it into a single logarithm on this side. So I have log base 3 of x to the power 4 divided by 3 equals 3. This is true because we have. Uh, the same base, we use the quotient rule, so it's x to the fourth divided by 3. And the 4, remember, turns the power. So now we're going to go ahead and convert this to the inverse. So I'm going to put it here in the side. So you have 3 raised to the power of 3 gives you x to the fourth divided by 3. So 3 to the power of 3 is 27 is equal x to the fourth divided by 3. <laughs> And then you're going to multiply 3 times 27, which is 81. So you have x to the fourth. And now you have to solve for x. So you're going to get the fourth root of the right side, and you get the fourth root of 81. And you notice that the answer can be 3, or 
x can equal to negative 3. And so we're going to have to check our answer by substituting. So we have 4 log base 3 of 3 minus minus log base 3 of 3. And does it equal 3? And the answer is yes. Now when you type in negative 3, you're going to notice it's not going to work. So it's going to be undefined. So the only answer is 3. 37, we can't find the same base. So remember I told you we have to introduce log. So you have to write log base 10 of 12 raised to the power x minus 1 is equal to log base 10 of 7. You're going to write x minus 1 on the side because that's a product property. And you have log base 10 of 12 equals log base 10 of 7. So what you need to do now is divide by log base, 20, base 10 of 12 and log base 10 of 12. So you have x minus 1 equals log of 7 over log of 12. Of course, I'm working in base 10. And then we're going to add 1 to both sides. So you're going to have to write in your calculator log base 10 of 7 divided by log base 10 of 12 plus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have log, and it's base 10 of 7, divided by log base 10 of 12. And you have to add 1. So your answer is approximately 1.783. And so I'm going to type that into the calculator. 12 raised to the power 1.783 zero nine minus one and it comes close to seven but it is seven given the graph of the exponential function identify the asymptote uh, the asymptote is actually right here here's the asymptote so this is y equals negative two the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity the range is y greater than negative two the y-intercept is where it intercepts the y-axis, which is 0, 0, negative 1. And what type of exponential function is it? It's going to be decay. When I first saw this graph, 1 fifth times 10 to the power x, it was hard to distinguish it. But we can eliminate some answers here. Here the y-intercept is 10. Here the y-intercept is 10. It's not going to be 10. Here the y-intercept is 5. So it's between A and B. So if I look at one order pair, uh, this one here, it says 3 comma 40. So let me see 3 comma 40. Nope, 3 is 200. So it isn't, I'm sorry, it's not D, it's not C. It's going to be A. The answer is A, just by looking at this point. So the answer is A. So number three, you just have to evaluate log base 4 of 4096, and that's 6. That's 6. Number five, we're going to express this as a single logarithm. So we have log base 8, and then we have 35 over 7. So we have log base 8 of 5. Remember, it's going to be 35 divided by 7, and it's going to be 5. There's a, there's a quotient problem. Number seven, we have log base 6 of A divided by 12. So I have log, log base 6 of A minus log base 6 of 12. For number 9, you really don't have to change the base to evaluate it. You can just type it into the calculator. Uh, we have log 2 of 91. So if you wanted to change the base, you can always change it to base 10. So you have log of 91 divided by log of 2, which is base 10. So I'm going to write log of 91 and I think the calculator will write 10 by default and then we have log of 2 and you notice it changed it for you base 10 and you see how it's the same graph the function f of x equal log base 2 of x minus 3 determine the x-intercept and the x-intercept is 8 0 so your answer will be it says find the max values of log base e so what I'm going to do is here I'm going to write e and then I'm just going to erase or take away the minus 3. The interval, 3 uh, through 8. So I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
And so the lowest or the maximum is 2.0, 2.79. It's right here. It's uh, 2.79. And then the minimum is 1.099. So you want to make a table. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you have 3 is 1.099. 4 is 1.38, 5 is 1.609, 6 is 1.79, 7 is 1.9, 4 and 8 is 2.079. So this is your min and this is your max. So your answer is number 15, you have 14, you have 14 raised to the power of 5x. And it's equal to 114. So we can't find a common base for that. So what you're going to do is you're going to introduce log 14 raised to the 5x power. And then you have log of 114. Remember that's base 10. We're going to use the power property to push to the front. So you have 5x times log base 10 of 14 equals log base 10 of 114 divided by 5 log base 10 of 14 divided by 5, log base 10 of 14. So x is approximately log, log of 114, divided by parentheses 5, log of 14. You get approximately 0.3589. So if you want to check, it's 14 raised to the power 5 times point, point, three five eight nine that comes out pretty close you're going to write this as a single log for number 17. you have to solve the log equation so i'm going to write log and we have four raised to the second power minus log and then you have log base n of three plus log x squared minus four equals zero so let's combine uh, these two so that's log and this is 4 squared over 3 plus log x squared minus 4 equals 0 now we can combine these two so you have log and I'm gonna say 16 16 x squared divided by 3 minus 4 equals 0 so I have log 16 x squared over 3 equals 4 because I'm adding 4 to both sides now I'm gonna raise it to base I'm gonna change it to base 10 or I'm gonna change it to exponential form so it's base 10 so you have 10 to the power 4 equals 16 x squared over 3 so 10 to the power 4 times 3 times 3 gives you 30,000 equals 16 x squared divide 30,000 by 16 1875 and then get the square root of 1875 43.3 so x equals plus or minus 43.012 it does come close to zero the only one that's not going to be used is the negative so it's going to be plus 43.30127 that's going to be the answer but the negative won't be the answer 19 write the expression as a single logarithm so we have natural log of x to the second power minus natural log of y to the third power so i made two and three into powers now we use the quotient rule natural log of x squared over y cubed so number three we have three times the natural log of a so that will be natural log that will be natural log of a to the third power minus natural log of b times c squared and then we have a half so the natural log of a to the third power minus natural log it's a root one half is a root b c squared you want to write that as one logarithm so that's natural log quotient property natural log of a cubed divided by square root of b c squared 